Hello everyone, my name is Obiyama and I want to dive right into something that God has been fixating my spirit on and that is the subject of faith. He's been driving this message home and I, I need you guys to suspend every like seed of doubt, maybe some things you've heard in church because what, what do you think of when you hear the word faith, right? Hebrews 11.1 is super popular. Um, faith is the substance of things not yet seen and that's actually what I want to premise this entire teaching on so if you have like five to ten minutes just lend me your time i promise um this revelation is going to bless you and it's going to empower you and give you the light necessary to manifest the goodness of god in the land of the living so i took a lot of notes because as he was downloading this into my spirit i wanted to be able to share it just like the holy spirit gave it to me without addition or subtraction truth and impurity and so um uh, like holy spirit help me speak your word in truth and love and purity bless whomever stumbles upon this word and let it truly just be a, a galvanizing agent for them to do what they've been called to do in purpose and to be who they've been called to be um, without spot or blemish or wrinkle and so like i told y'all hebrews 11 1 is where god started actually god started me on john 10 10 um and for those of you that don't know what John 10 10 says, it's um, in paraphrase form, you know, uh, the enemy, the devil comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. And then Jesus is saying, but I have come to give life and life abundantly. And so the question in my mind, and I hope the question in your mind is, what is the enemy coming to steal, to kill and to destroy, right? Because that verse we've always kind of translated it as okay the devil comes to steal kill and destroy but how many of us have asked what he's coming to steal kill and destroy and then for jesus to answer but i have come right so his he's presenting an antithesis he's presenting the devil's plan but he's also showing us the counter strategy i being jesus have come to give life and life abundantly and so one would um, postulate that the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy life. And that's true, that he has come to steal, kill, and destroy life. But what is life, right? That's the other question that we need to ask. And I'm trying to lead you guys into my th train of thought and how the spirit led me to this place where we go into the deeper understanding of what faith is, right? What is life? What is life? What is life? Um, let's look at what scripture says about life. Galatians 2.20 a lot of words before this, but it says, I live by faith in the Son of God. Romans 1.17 says, the righteous, the just, that those who have been justified, those who have been called, shall live by faith. And so now we have two instances in the New Testament where life and faith cannot exist without one another, right? Life and faith cannot exist with one another. Now, lay that groundwork let's lay some more groundwork the word for faith the most commonly used word for faith not for belief but for faith in the greek is this greek word pistis pistis means to be persuaded by god literally the faith that we have when scripture says each man has been given a measure of faith that is not just the bible you know saying things that sound good and make us feel good right that is the bible trying to teach us a doctrinal principle a foundational understanding of how god operates and God operates by giving each of us, each man, every man has been given a measure of faith. Not every angel, not every demon, every man has been given a measure of faith. So all of us that exist on this side of eternity, we have been given a measure of faith, right? And then scripture talks about what faith can do all throughout Hebrews 11, right? Let's like quickly go through it. It says, you know, it starts by defining what faith is. The faith is the substance of things not seen, but things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? That's what some translations say. That's Hebrews 11.1. 1. And then it talks in Hebrews 11.2, for by it, it being faith, the elders obtained a good report. So faith allows us to obtain a good report. We can talk about what the word obtain means. Through Hebrews 11.2, through faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So without faith, the worlds could not have been framed. Now that word worlds refers to dominion and domains of and spheres of influence. The worlds. Okay, let's keep going. Hebrews 11, 4. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. So faith is the only thing that allows us to offer a more excellent sacrifice. Let's keep going. By faith, Enoch was translated. Translated means literally to go from one place to the other. 
almost like think of a teleportation from one place to another. And so that's why when scripture talks about um, when we accept salvation, right, that's a translative process. What that means is when you become saved and you say, Jesus Christ, you are Lord of my life, you are my savior, you are, you know, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, whatever that confession of faith looks like you undergo a translation process there is no way that you can go from the kingdom of darkness which is the satanic kingdom of death to the kingdom of life which is light and light abundantly in the kingdom of god without faith which is a translative agent so faith translates okay that's hebrews 11 5 and then Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So there's no way that God can find pleasure in you if faith does not exist. Let's keep going. Hebrews 11, 7, by faith, Noah prepared the ark. So faith is what authorizes and allows us to prepare. We can talk about what the word prepares means, but let's keep going. Hebrews 11, 8, by faith, Abraham obtained, um, obeyed. So faith is what enables us to obey. Let's keep going. I'm laying a foundation, guys. I hope you're keeping up and I hope the spirit is right now downloading to you where I'm heading. Hebrews 11, 9, by faith, Abraham sojourns. Faith is what allows us to travel. That word sojourn means to travel, to go through, to, um, to, to pass, right? Hebrews 11, 10, through faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. Without faith, you do you need first of all, now we know that we require strength in order to conceive. Conception is not a futile process. Conception requires a level of strength, right? It's not something that is passive. It requires active insemination to conceive. It requires active reception to receive and to conceive. And so Sarah required the strength in order to conceive. And that was only possible through faith. So now let's go back to John 10.10 because we've spent a good majority of laying the foundation with Hebrews 11. This is what faith allows us to do, right? Faith allows us to um, form the world, to obtain dominion, influence, spheres of authority. Faith allows us to obey. Faith is what gives us the grace to prepare. Faith is what allows us to sojourn, to travel, to go towards whatever the destination or the destiny that God has allowed us to. So what, let's go back to John 10, 10, is the devil trying to steal y'all? Devil is trying to steal your faith. Demons, angelic beings, and, extra, and any creature that is not man, is not given a measure of faith. But yet, the realm of the spirit operates by what? According to Hebrews 11, faith. Formation and manifestation in the earth realm from the realm of the spirit to the natural man's realm can only occur through faith. We transact in the realm of the spirit. Transact means we do um, business. We, 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 we give and we take by exchanging our faith. Your faith is the only thing, right, that you can use to purchase anything in God's kingdom, right? By grace, through faith, let no man boast is how we obtain salvation and literally everything else in the kingdom of light or in Christ's kingdom. And so when the enemy comes to you, y'all, he's not, I've said this before and I will, I will continue to say it as God gives me more revelation and light around it. The devil does not care about your stuff. He does not care about your relationships. He does not care about your family. He does not even care about your generation and your bloodlines. He don't give a darn. He's coming after your faith. He's coming after the faith of your children. He's coming after the faith of your grandchildren. He's coming after the faith that will move the mountains. He's coming after the faith that will enable you to conceive what God by his spirit has inseminated into your very soul. He's coming after the faith that will make those things that are not seen into those things that are seen. The devil has come to kill your faith, steal your faith, and destroy your faith. And why is that? because he was not given a measure of faith. And so when he wants to do operation in the realm of the spirit, he needs somebody's faith. So if he can steal your faith to believe in the purposes and the plans that God has for your life, then he can use that faith to, trans to transact in the realm of the spirit and make manifest the demonic plans and agendas of hell. Mind, mind blown, mind blown. Right. Because we got to we got we got to get out of this emotionalism that comes with um, a, a, gr a beautiful experience of, of Christ. Right. We get so emotional about Christ and we get so mystical without biblical foundation. 
Let's get out of that. Let's come into what the word of God says. And the word of God says that faith is the currency of the realm of the spirit. And so when Satan comes to kill your faith, right? And let's even break down that word. Let's, let's start with steal. John 10, 10, the devil comes to steal. Steal is the um, Greek word kle uh, klepto, kleptomaniac is one of the words that you guys have probably heard that, um, that go with the word steal. Klepto, steal by stealth. Right. When Satan comes to steal your faith, it's not going to be one moment that is like, OK, now I don't believe in Jesus no more. It's not it's never going to be that. It's going to be steady seeds that question the validity of the sovereign God. Just like he came to Eve in that garden, his agenda has been the same. Right. Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. God, the father in the garden told Adam and Eve, you can eat of any fruit. Ex actually told Adam, you can eat of any fruit except this one fruit. It's the, and he told them what the fruit was. He said, you know, this is a tree of, of good and evil. Don't eat of it. Everything else is yours. And what did Satan come to do? He inseminated a lie into the mind of Eve that said, did God really say that? Questioning the integrity of God, but never directly. He never said God is a liar. He never said God can't be trusted. He questioned the image that she was made in of God. You're like, how did he do that? He said, did God really say that? I.e., did you really hear what God said? Well, why would you, why would questioning her hearing have anything to do with faith? What does scripture say about hearing? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so indirectly, Satan stole Eve's faith. You didn't really hear what you thought you heard, so obey me. Okay, John 10, 10, the devil comes to steal, to kill. That word kill actually is the Greek word theo, thoo, T-H-U-O, thoo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but that it means to sacrifice, like to kill a sacrifice, kill an animal, sacrifice an animal, right? When we go back to what Abel did, right? By faith, Abel offered a more acceptable sacrifice. Okay, sacrifice still goes on in the realm of the spirit, right? Because we know that, again, transaction, the currency of transaction in the realm of the spirit is faith. Faith is like the dollar bill of the realm of the spirit, right? Or, you know, the euro of the realm of the spirit. But there's also other um, exchange mechanisms in the realm of the spirit. There's barter and trade systems that exist in the realm of the spirits. And one of those mechanisms of exchange is sacrifice. When we talk about scripture that says um, obedience is better than sacrifice, there's a reason, right? Obedience can only be birthed by the greater currency, faith. But sacrifice sacrifice right is a lesser currency that can still be used to obtain something in the realm of the spirit so god is saying in that verse there's a better bill that you can use there's a more expensive um you know currency that you can use that would actually purchase you more than simply sacrificing that's why some people because of their sacrifice will obtain greatness wealth success because they were able to sacrifice but we as those who believe in the king of kings and the lord of lords and have our, our dwellers in the kingdom of light we have a better currency we have a more powerful currency right we have the dollar bill of global economy Right. We don't have a, you know, third world currency that is worth far less than that of the dollar. We don't have to use a lesser currency. We can use a higher currency, that which is faith. OK, let's keep going. So the enemy steals our or kills our faith. Right. And offers it as a sacrifice so he can obtain lesser things. So if he steals it, if he is able to steal our faith then he can steal the dominions, the territory, the influences that belong to us. If he can kill our faith, right? He can use it as a system of bartering in the realm of the spirit to be able to obtain maybe a lesser fruit, right? And lastly, destroy. The devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. That word destroy is apollomy. The Greek word apollomy, which means to cause to perish, right? With uh with cut off and fully destroy okay cut off and fully destroy how do we obtain faith what does scripture say every man has been given a measure of faith right god is our benevolent father as we call it, abba father he's the one who gives us our inheritance he's the one in whom our life force and life form comes from if the enemy is fully successful in his plan right of stealing killing 
and now destroying your faith. What that looks like is you are totally cut off from the salvation that you once maybe knew or had a potential to know, right? And so when, he tra when the enemy transacts in the realm of destruction, his ultimate goal is to kill not even kill, to utterly destroy anything that could have been ever birthed from the lineage of faith that you've been given. Blow, mind blown. And so when Luke 18, 8, and this is where I'll end off, says, when the son of man returns, will he find faith on the earth? It was not a soliloquy. It was not, you know, um, just the Bible being verbose and, and, and saying pretty poetry that sounds good. It's because the hint was being given to us about what the enemy of our souls is after, right? And so when Jesus comes back, he's looking for faith because he knows that those who still possess faith, right? Those who still have multiplied their faith, those who still are continuing to transact with their faith, those are the ones who have the wealth that is necessary to administer his kingdom on earth. Because when the new Jerusalem comes, when Christ comes back in all his eternal glory, right? There's still going to be those that are rich and poor. There's still going to be those of high faith and lesser faith. And those of higher faith are the ones who are going to be given the authority to be able to administer the agencies of Christ on this earth realm. Everything costs, y'all. Everything costs. There's nothing truly free. And there's nothing truly free because everything has a worth associated with it. And so it would be unjust of a worthy God to give you something for free that has a worth associated with it. And so even when it comes to Jesus Christ, right, God gave you the ability to be able to pay for salvation by embedding in you the faith to save. He knew you could never afford his son. He knew that you did not have enough faith in you to purchase salvation. So he said, I will give you the faith to believe in my son. I will write my word on your heart. I will draw you in with my loving kindness. I will convince you that he alone, Jesus Christ, is worthy of service. And so, yes, we preach that no man can boast in their own ability that they were able to obtain salvation. But that doesn't make salvation free. One, salvation was only able to be manifested by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the most expensive blood that has ever existed, the best sacrifice, the greatest sacrifice, ushered in by his faith, by Jesus' faith, that in this work, it would be finished. It is finished, right? And secondarily, we were able to now purchase the most expensive gift by the grace of God, by unmerited giving by the spirit of truth to us the ability to purchase salvation by believing in Jesus. I pray you guys have a blessed day. Share this. Share this with whoever needs to hear it because this is a powerful message. It's going to change the way we perceive what Satan is doing. Anytime you are questioning what God has said, if you've heard God and you are questioning it, if you have heard God and you're on the edge, if you have heard God and you are like confused or battling whether or not to move forward, don't move forward, whatever the case is, your faith is under attack. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. And that's a whole nother teaching and preaching and, 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 and postulating, right? But we need to have the shield of faith. Put on your whole armor, the shield of faith. That shield of faith is going to protect you from every weapon of war formed against you. And then we need to war offensively by the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So if the enemy is attacking you, is your shield of faith up? Are you holding God as his word? Are you saying, you know what, God, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense, but I'm going to believe you. And then are you doing offensive warfare by going back to this word and saying, enemy, I know what you're doing. You have come with an agenda. Your agenda is to steal my faith. Your agenda is to kill my faith. And your agenda is to destroy my faith. But I won't have it because the just and I am the just right? We live by faith. And I don't walk by what I see. I don't walk by circumstances. I don't walk by situations. I walk by faith. That is my sight of vision in the realm of the spirit. And the faith that I have in Christ Jesus says that all things must work together. That's that sort of the spirit again, for my good, according to Romans. Every attack, every dismay, every disillusionment, every disenchantment, it must work together for my good. 
We gotta do battle. We gotta do war. And we have to win because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And we cannot speak what we do not have victory over. Okay. Share this message. Share this video. Be blessed. Bye, y'all.